echo his words, I for one welcome our new computer overlords. <laughs> Thanks very much. Wow, loud. <clears throat> hey, was that awesome or what? Like, that guy, I think, I want to go look Andrew McAfee and see what other videos he's got out there. Uh, hit the lights, please, if you would. All right, so uh, you all have your little positives and negatives list. And just kind of looking. How about you guys be a group right here, these three right here, those four right there be a group, uh, those three a group, you four a group, and then you five are a group. So just take a moment, introduce yourself. Hi, right, my name is. And then you're going to share one positive and one negative about kind of what you got from that video in your group. Go ahead and do it. Finish book chatting. If you haven't shared something, please make sure you share. All right, cool, very cool, very cool. Finish up. I loved hearing the enthusiasm with which you guys were uh, talking. That was awesome. You guys are awesome. It's like, wow, talk about it. And you just jumped right in, and that was great. That was really cool hearing the enthusiasm with which you were talking about that. Anybody want to share anything that jumped out for them or came out of their group from that video? Yeah, let's hear it. We, we all have just about the same uh, concept when it came to having like robots like Watson. And yeah. It's a big positive. It's cool to have that. And, yeah. And uh, have that... Uh, just, I mean, have something like that, so that's great, yeah. but the negative parts of that is that, I mean, things like lots of can take over all human tasks, you know, and jobs and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. It doesn't make seem, it takes away jobs, and, you know, they can flip out on us, and, you know? Yeah. Same thing with that car, you know, that's a great thing to have one of those autonomous yeah. cars, but, like, computers, computers aren't perfect, they crash on us, yeah. they fail, you know, there's going yeah. to be a failure, no matter what, it's going to be a failure, there'll be a death involved in it. Yeah, for sure. Well, they, there already has been. They have autonomous weapons that have, you know, you mistakenly killed people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it starts to get a little bit like, you know, I feel much better now. You know, Dave, I really think you need to sit down, take a pill, a stress pill, and think things over. I have great confidence in our ability to go forward with the mission, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. Anybody else? Cool. Well, I liked hearing you guys share with each other. I think it's an interesting deal, just kind of looking at how uh, labor is being impacted by technology. So, uh, you know, labor and the Industrial Revolution, we had our day when we were much more of a manufacturing center in the world. Now China has their day, and they're manufacturing a lot of this technology, and what's that like for them? And then also, uh, where will the technology, you know, again, how will labor be impacted by technology? Uh, so we saw kind of the China workers on Monday, and then today, kind of looking at, wow, you know, robots and automated processes and things like that. Um, you know, what's coming for us and all of the labor markets in the world? So I thought that's pretty interesting. How many people already knew about the Google autonomous car? How many people have never heard about that? Okay, so Google has invented this car. It's right here. It's the driverless car. And we'll watch this video next week. But uh, this, they've, they've created a car which drives itself. Like modern day streets, you know, so the engineers just sit in the car and the car's just, they've driven it over 100,000 miles around California. As a matter of fact, somebody in here saw it. I saw, saw it. You saw that like three or four weeks ago. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It's weird. It just has like this big thing on top that spins around and like, I guess it just can tell where things are. Yeah. 
So uh, I'd be tempted to like, you know, have a really old, we should get like a really old crappy 76 Chevy Chevelle or something and go find the Google car and like bump it and see what it does. <laughs> you know, like get too close to it, see how it reacts. Like, you know, I wonder if after a while, like a little automated gun would just beep, rise up. <laughs> right? Like, a little automated road rage, you know? You have fender bendered me three times. That is enemy action. I wonder how they program that in. And then they also mention uh, DARPA. Uh, so, DARPA is the Def Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. And DARPA is making a huge push for uh, robots right now, you know, so the military is really investing, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, the military is really investing a ton of money and into research of robots, and so here you can see Big Dog right there. Uh, legged robots walk out for a capabilities demonstration, you know, and uh, they, they have some directive by 2015, I think they want half of all vehicles uh, in combat to be unmanned. Ooh, half of all vehicles. Like so, that's three years in combat to be unmanned. So uh, the internet also came out of DARPA, all right. So that was in the six, late sixties. DARPA said we need a type of uh, uh, packet switching, not a switched network, but packet switched network. Uh, so they start creating the internet, and in the eighties they opened it up. Late eighties opened it up to universities, and then in the early nineties Tim Berners Lee created the World Wide Web. Um, so that's DARPA. They mentioned that in there. It's something that's interesting to know about and look at. You can come here and read about some pretty amazing stuff that they're doing with robots. You know, so that's Big Dog. I think we've seen that already. Yeah, yeah, we saw Big Dog, but that apparently is the newer one. Show that one. Yeah, you want to see just a moment of yeah, the Big new, Dog? The new one, yeah. Big Dog, rising up. Is it quiet or is there a sound? There's a sound. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, I want. I'm, you know, I mean, like, I don't know, just play some Marine song. I'm happy to be a Marine. Happy Marine. Kind of crazy. What's that? I have no idea. I have no idea. I think you could probably just set coordinates and say, "Go, go find Mama." You know, go, go, go take ammunition, food, and weapons to these, you know, twelve Marines who are in a firefight. And then after they get their weapons, food, and ammunition, they could say, run over there and kick all those people in the head. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. No, I don't know. It's disgusting. It's terrible. That's a crazy world. Hey, uh, I really appreciate your guys' cards on Monday, too. There's some awesome cards. So, you know, basically it says, thanks for bringing Marilyn in. Uh, that was really cool, learning about the Chinese workers and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and somebody shared that they they liked how this class kind of mixes it up a little and hasn't fallen into a boring standard format. Same thing every time, it keeps it interesting. So thanks thanks for your cards. I do read them, of course. Uh, today 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 I want to talk about application software briefly, and then give you guys time to work, and I'll be here to help you. So hopefully we'll get through this you know within a half hour at least. It's just going to be a conversation. There's a few, few things you should know about, and, uh, and then you guys will have an hour to work. But uh, hit the front lights, if you would, also. Yeah, perfect. You guys can still see this, right? And it looks like good enough on there. So we broke, uh, we broke computers down into hardware and software. We could break hardware down into IPOS based upon what kind of category it does, right? If it's an input piece of hardware or an output piece of hardware. And uh, then we could break software down into system software and application software. So there you have software broken down into system and application. And uh, we could break uh, system software down into, you know, uh, yeah. Can you turn off the front lights? Okay, let's do the front lights off. Well, there we go, perfect. We could break system software down into, thank you for being the light person. 
break system software down into your operating system, your translators, and your, your, your uh, utilities, your drivers. Operating system, utilities, drivers. That's system software. Application software, you know, how do you break it down, right? Just so you think about all the different uses of your computer. That's basically what application software is. You know, uh, video games, maybe you can make that a category. It's all kind of arbitrary, this category. So, hey, there's video games. We can break it down. There's video games, then there's, you know, office software, and then there's financial software. We could break it down like that if we wanted. The way the book breaks it down is by what kind of a license does the software have. Okay, so at one extreme, you've got the commercial license, commercial license. That's owned by one person or one entity, one corporation. By the way, corporations are seen as people in the eyes of the law. Don't know if you guys know that. And I saw a funny bumper sticker that said, I'll believe a corporation, I'll believe corporations are people when Texas sentence one, sentences one to the death row and executes it. <laughs> oh, that was pretty funny. Did I not say that clearly? Did you guys hear it? Okay, I'll believe corporations are people when Texas executes one. All right? Does that make sense, right? So under the eyes of law, corporations are seen as people. And interestingly, there's an amazing documentary called, uh, you know, it's, I think it's just corporations, Hutu. That'd be interesting. Hutu. Uh, corp, corp, I can't, or Asian... Corporations documentary. So uh, it's called the Corporation documentary. This is it right there. This is a fantastic way to spend like three hours on a Friday night or Saturday night, whenever. Instead of like whatever. This this is an amazing documentary, the Corporation. So check that out. Uh, so anyhow. Corporations are seen as people in the eyes of law. So commercial software is owned by one person or one entity or a corporation or something like that, and then it's sold. When you buy software, you don't own that software. You buy Microsoft Office, you don't own Microsoft Office. You own a license to use it. You own a license to use it. Likewise with music. You buy Bruce Springsteen's new album, you don't own that album, you own a license. To, to listen, to use that music, to listen to it, right? You can't now take Bruce Springsteen's music because you bought a CD and, like, start making movies with it and music videos and, like, you know, go to get people who know how to play and give a concert and have them play that and charge people for entrance fees and make copies of the disc and start selling it and set up a website where people can pay you to download it. Obviously, you can't do that because you don't own it. You own a license, the right to use it. So it's a license with certain conditions. And with music, it's usually like, hey, you get to listen to this. You know? Yeah, you get to listen to it. Put it on your computer, your iPad, your iPhone, iPod, i whatever, and you can listen to this music. With software, it's like you can install it on your, com your three computers. Okay, and I know a lot of people are also like, oh, and my roommates, you know, and friends, few friends, and so that's commercial software. You buy a license, use it. At the other end, you've got public domain software. So this is kind of intellectual property stuff, the way it's categorized, ownership. Public domain software or public domain anything, it's in the domain of the public. It's in the public domain, meaning nobody owns it. Everybody owns it. Nobody owns it. Everybody owns it. You can do whatever you want with it. So you download something in the public domain, go ahead, do whatever you want with it. Mash it up, make a movie, make something, charge people to come see it. They, nobody cares. Everybody owns it. There's no one person who owns it. So what are some of the things that are like in the public domain? You can go to, 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 you can go to, what is it called? Archive.org. You go to archive.org and you come here and you can look for videos and in the videos you can uh, you can find government videos, so military. And then these government videos, if they're made by the government, they're in the public domain and you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want with them. Right? Like here's one right here. It's in the public domain. You can download this. Do whatever you want with it. 
So you, you can also look for things in the public domain. Uh, public domain. Public domain music. Oops, public domain images. Let's go with music. Actually, images would be easier to see. I don't know how you find them, right? Maybe at this website, but these websites will probably be trying to sell you something. So, so same with software, same ownership categories. So, and then in between, you've got somewhere in between commercial and public domain. So you got shareware, freeware, and open source. Shareware, freeware, and open source. And we learned a little bit about open source. We learned a little bit about open source software with Linux. Shareware and freeware. Shareware and freeware. Like one of these is freeware, you get to use it as long as you want, but you don't own it, right? But you don't have to pay anybody for it, it's free. Shareware, you get to use it for like three day, 30 days, three days, it's a trial edition, then after that it expires and you no longer get to use it. So that, that's what those are. Uh, so, the other thing about li licensing which is interesting is, so this is, the licensing thing is called an end user license agreement, it's called EULA. End user license agreement, just so you know about it. And that's the thing you always click to accept on. Do you accept these terms and conditions? Yes, I accept them, you click accept. So that, that's the licensing on it. Um, minimum system requirements. Anytime you buy a piece of software, you got to make sure that your computer can run it. So every piece of software will have minimum system requirements. For instance, My IT Lab. If you Google My IT Lab, My IT Lab minimum system requirements, it's going to it's going to uh, it's going to tell you that you need to use. Internet, if you're using Windows, it needs to be Windows Vista, Windows 7, and maybe I think Windows XP. And you have to use Internet Explorer as your browser. Those are the requirements for that software. So some people try to use Chrome and Firefox, and they're like, why doesn't it work? You know, it's like, well, look at the minimum system requirements. It says you have to use this operating system in this browser. Okay? So those are the minimum system requirements that come with every piece of software. Um, Acquiring software, I don't know, how do you guys acquire software? All right, like one good thing to know about if you do need to buy Microsoft Office, if you go to Fresno City College's website, oh, cool, right there. And you could go to faculty and staff, you could go to faculty staff purchases. I don't know where this is under students, but I think it takes you to the same place. And uh, faculty staff discount offerings. You know, so you can look like here, Journey Ed. You could come in here and you could try these and see if they work for students. Like Journey Ed, right? Destination Journey Ed. And you could come in here and you could get Microsoft Office and other software really cheap. So Microsoft Office University 2010 download $100. You know, um, so Photoshop, FileMaker Pro, other things like that. So anytime you're going to buy software, Always look for the educational pricing. Adobe Education Store, right? Adobe Education Store. And you can go there. And here's the Adobe Education Store. So Adobe does a lot of graphics, video, things like that. And shop the Student Teacher Store. Save up to 80% on Adobe products, right? And so this stuff is all fine if it's for educational purposes. Basically, you're not going to use it for a company. You know, so even if you're, well, I don't want to say that, but if you are learning, if it's for educational purposes, you don't want to buy this and then go start a company where you're doing business. But, you know, everything else is pretty educational. Sometimes they have ways of checking to see if you're a student somewhere. So a lot of stuff has that kind of pricing. So always look for it. Okay? Like Fresno State, their, their store has... Uh, they, they have a store out there with computer stuff where they have educational pricing, the bookstore. Apple Education Store, right? So the Apple Education, Apple Store for Education, back to school offer, Apple Education Store, you know? Find, find your school to start shopping for yourself, okay? So you can come in here and get education pricing for not only software, but also hardware. So how many people never knew that? Yeah, that's a great thing to know. That's a great thing to know. All right, so that's uh, that's acquiring software. 
Uh, piracy and intellectual property, of course, we were talking about licenses. Piracy, how many people have heard piracy, that term? Software pirates, software piracy. So uh, software piracy, piracy is just taking intellectual property that's not yours and using it when you should be paying somebody to use it or making money from it when it's not yours to make money from it. All right, so I was in uh, Watsonville recently and there was somebody who was selling DVDs outside of a, a Mexican taqueria at a strip mall, you know, and just a few DVDs set up against the wall. And I was like, yeah, those look pretty bootleg, right? So that guy, you know, doing a little uh, movie, intellectual property piracy, right? A little piracy there. So that's kind of what piracy refers to. It's against the law. You guys should know that it's against the law. So it comes down to that ethical thing, right? Um, if, uh, good, I'm recording. I'm sorry, I feel a little bit spacey all of a sudden. If, uh, mm, intellectual property, piracy. <laughs> I don't know where my thoughts just went. Steal. Whatever, I guess it means it's time to go on. Okay, so uh, a good place to look for stuff is download.com. So if you need some software to do something, download.com is a pretty trusted source. There's also open source windows.org for Windows software. And Linux is pretty cool, obviously, for bringing in little, you know, modular pieces of software. And apps are also pretty amazing for your iPad and for, for your iPhone. You know, so those things are pretty amazing. Like, you know, one of the things that's super interesting is, you know, hey, where are we going? Where's software going? What's going to be the next new thing? What's going to be the next cool app, the next Angry Birds, or the next Price Shopper? How many people know the Price Shopper application on your iPhone or iPad? Anybody seen that? So for 99 cents, you can download this thing called Price Shopper. Price Shopper app. Is that it? I don't know. Maybe that's not it. App Store Price Shopper app, app, app. Price Checker, is that it? Price Checker app. So, uh, anyhow, whatever. Something like that. 10 best shopping apps to compare prices. Oh, that'd be interesting. Okay, so I don't want to read all that, but you could read it. Uh, so it's an application with your iPhone. You're in a store. You're like, oh, this is cool. Like, I want to get these new earbuds, right? But wow, they're, they're $39.95. How much would it cost if I buy these online? You take your iPhone. You scan the barcode. It checks all the online prices, and it shows you here are all the stores that offer it online and what they offer for you. You say, oh, well, hi, you're going to get it for $14.95 at Amazon. Okay, cool. You know, so I was, I was in guitar store, whatever, guitar center, Blackstone, Barstow. And they had a little guitar tuner for twenty nine ninety five, but hey, on Amazon it's nine ninety five. They're like, okay, we'll sell it to you for nine ninety five. <laughs> Great, save twenty bucks. So that's kind of a cool thing. So where 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 is software going? Uh, partly, if you can look to see where we've been, right? And in the past, software has included you know increasing productivity. Like we want to make things, you know, make make have you work less and make more, do things more efficiently, increase productivity. You know, that's been one of the big aims of software. It still is. And, uh, and so they had killer apps, killer apps, like applications that were so killer, and that kind of comes from maybe Jeff Spicoli and Fast Times at Ridgemont High or the entire Valley Girl thing. Like, oh, that's totally killer, right? But that's a phrase, killer apps, that people actually use in the tech world. Oh, it's a killer app. Right? Like killer being kind of like super cool. And so a killer app is something you absolutely need. Like it, it, it totally is like you'll spend thousands of dollars so that you can have that. You know, and so spreadsheets were that because accountants and people who work with numbers could do in like one day what it used to take them five days to do if they had a spreadsheet. Oh, hell yeah, I'm going to invest 5,000 bucks and buy that. If I could do in one day what took five days. And word processing, same deal. Typewriters, those are screwy. Clunk, 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 white out, painting on the page, you know, and word processing, yeah, I'll spend thousands of dollars so that we can do that. Those are killer apps. So that's where we've been. Where are we going? 
you know, there's more connectivity, right? Everything is connected, Facebook, crowdsourcing, you know, uh, kickstarter.com. Uh, it's ubiquitous, it's just everywhere, right? It's personalized, so it's tailored for you, it knows you, kind of like Khan Academy, you learn what you need to learn, you fill in those holes of your education, it's personalized. It's transparent often, you don't even know it's there, you know, it's just happening. So like, my car has a thing, like I got a Tacoma, and as I go faster, it's speed sensitive steering. So when I'm slower, my steering is more responsive. As I go faster, it gets less responsive. So that I stay, you know, as I move faster, I stay straight. You know, not, whoa, this is squirrely. You know, so that's, I, I don't even know it's there unless I knew about it somehow. I didn't even notice that. I just think, hey, this truck handles really well. But that's, you know, transparent. I don't even see it. So what, you know, what are the next killer apps? That's, that's an interesting question. So some categories of software. I don't know. What are your guys' favorite apps? What do you like to use? Like, teach me something. Like, oh, I love Angry Birds. Okay, cool. What is Angry Birds? At one point, I was like, I don't know what Angry Birds is. And then I played it, and I was like, well, yeah, that is pretty addictive. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this, and I wanted to play it more. Dang it, I almost had it. I almost knocked everything down. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna. And it was like 4:30 in the morning, and you know, I was selling old comic books so I could keep playing Angry Birds. <laughs> Sport my habit is is bad. What are some of the software you guys like? Oh, I really like this. Like, I like the price comparison thing when I'm shopping. I just recently used Google Translate. Yeah, Google Translate's awesome. Yeah, so that's one of our assignments. So you guys will experience that in assignments, and I'll go over that. Google Translate. What else? I feel like I can't breathe in Fresno anymore. Huh? A weather app. Yeah, so, all right. You know, knowing what the weather is. I don't know, dude. Google Maps, you know, figuring out what's the quickest route. Google taking into account even traffic, you know, traffic flow. It's just, there's so much crazy crap out there. But here are some of the big things that I really stand out. So personal financial management software, it's a big deal. For me, that's been a life, a life changer. Managing your finances and knowing how, how much money you got in the bank. You know, like I got my car payment, I got my credit card due dates. You know, I've got my house payment, I've got City of Fresno utilities, I've got Comcast, I've got my regular paycheck, I've got my overtime paycheck coming in, I've got my wife's paycheck, you know, there's the cell phone, you know, there's just all this money coming in and going out, and it's like, how much do I have? And, and where did I spend it? And then when it comes time to do taxes, holy crap, you know, like, you know, how, uh, can I deduct any of this? And if so, where and how? Well, if you get good personal financial management software like Quicken, you connect it to all your accounts, it downloads all of your transactions, you just click approve, 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 right? That, okay, these are transactions I authorize. And, and then if you start seeing transactions that, oh no, those weren't mine, well then it's not like you can say disapprove and it stops them, but then oh, you call your credit card company or you call your bank, hey, there's some transactions here that don't look right, you know? And then as you accept all those transactions, you could categorize them. Oh, this one's household. Oh, this one's groceries. Oh, this one is lunch. Oh, this one was lunch with employees, which is a tax, or lunch with uh, coworkers, which is a tax deductible category, right? Like, I go keep up relations with my colleagues. I go to lunch with them. I spend money on that. I could take that off. What's that mean? I spend, I spend $20 on lunch. Now that lunch only costs me 70% of $20 because I don't pay taxes on the, or, I don't have to pay taxes on that 30%. So really, in effect, that lunch didn't cost me $20, it cost me $14. So if I could keep track of all of that, you know, I go mail something for my writing, and it's like, well, that's $100 at the post office store, but it only cost me 70 because I'm not going to have to pay, because that's, that's an expense, so that decreases my income, which I then pay tax on. So really, in effect, it saves me 30%. Right, or whatever my tax bracket is. And at the end of the year, I just print out what are all my tax deductions. 
and it prints out everything, right? And then I, I could really save, like it lowers the amount of money I made in income so I don't have to pay tax on as much stuff because I had all these other expenses which are allowable deductions. And so that's like a secret for making your money go farther and for keeping track of your money and knowing how much you got in the bank at any given time. So for me, that's been super important. And you could go to places like lynda.com lynda.com and you could like learn, hey, I want to learn how to use Quicken. P, Q, P, Q, P, Q. Wait, we're at P, R. There's no Quicken? Software. There's Quicken. Quicken. I want to learn how to use Quicken. Right? And here's uh, how to use Quicken. You know? And so I could pay 25 bucks for access to this website for a month and I could learn how to use Quicken. So Quicken's pretty amazing. So that's something I think is a need to know takeaway. And then, of course, we all know what word processing is, right? You could do it with Microsoft Word. You could do it with Google Documents. You could do it with open source Office. Spreadsheets allow you to crunch numbers. That's Microsoft Excel. There's also a spreadsheet application inside Google Documents, which you're going to use to calculate your grade in this class. Super powerful tool. Databases are bases of data. They keep track of data. So names of databases, Microsoft Access, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server are huge databases. And then you've got uh, My, My, MySQL, which is a, a I want to say it's open source, MySQL, 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 the most, oh yeah, the world's most popular open source database. So, you know, that means it, it's free. You just have to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. So that's just to keep track of data. Those are more high-end stuff. We're going to learn a little bit about databases for sure, some of the basics, some of the terminology associated with databases, how to do some basic things. And databases are essential to the technolo technology revolution, the information revolution, because it's where we store everything. Facebook's nothing but a database. Google's nothing but a database. Like anything that's pulling information and showing it to you, that's a database. All that information is stored somewhere, and they're asking questions of the database and getting that information back, right? And then showing it to you. So they're like filing cabinets, but digital. Uh, presentation software, right? PowerPoint. Application suites. Sweet! A suite is just a bunch of different programs bundled together. Browsers let you browse the web. Graphics software, you know, allows you to work with graphics, obviously, like Photoshop. And, and Photoshop is amazing, dude. Photoshop's amazing. I don't know when I was going to show you this video, but um, there's this amazing video of Photoshop. Photoshop auto, auto fill. Yeah, a content aware fill sneak preview, dude. It's it's mind blowing. Do you want to see it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Hi, my name is Brian O'Neill Hughes. I'm one of the product managers on the Photoshop. Completely changed a, a wide image for web, and here we fixed a really common problem with panoramas. So just a few of the things that you can do with content aware fill. Wow, huh? <laughs> yeah, what's up with that guy? The video is watched in class. Add that to the list. Uh, hit the lights, please. How many people uh, found that pretty dang amazing? Yeah, I think that's pretty dang amazing. So that's graphic software. You could take an entire Photoshop class, or you could go to that lynda.com website and learn their Photoshop. You know, learn from them, learn Photoshop from them. See, I don't think I'm getting enough oxygen to my head. That's, that's one of my theories. Video editing software. Edit movies. Uh, so we use Windows Movie Maker in here, but there's also iMovie on your Mac. And then if you want to step it up to a higher level, you could use Final Cut Pro. That's Adobe, or Adobe Premiere. I don't know. I forget which is which. Final Cut Pro is the Apple one, and Adobe Premiere is the Windows one. So that's video editing software. Web-based software, software just running in the cloud, right? Computer-based training is, sometimes you hear that phrase, training done on computers. The end. Anybody have any thoughts, questions, comments? Cool. Do what you want for the next hour. No, 50 minutes. And I'm here to help you.
I recommend working on assignments.